Welcome to Polyglot Podcast. I'm Christian. I'm from Finland, Rovaniemi in Lapland. And uh, today we have a guest from Mexico, Arturo. Welcome to the podcast. Thanks, Christian. Yeah. So, uh, okay. Okay. So, so I found I, I found you on Instagram, and I I, I noticed your language enthusiast as well. And we haven't actually had any from anyone from Mexico, so I'm I'm really happy to have you on the podcast to talk about your language background and about also something about Mexico and that kind of stuff. So yeah, now first you can introduce yourself uh, with a few so, phrases like "Where are you right now?" and "Who are you?" and like that. Sure. Uh... Yeah, me too. I'm glad to be here. And yeah, I am from Mexico. I am from Matamoros, Tamaulipas. Uh, it's a city in the border um, with the United States. So yeah, I'm very close to America. Yeah. And how old are you now? I'm 20 years old. 20 years old. Okay. Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, funny thing is that I actually have uh, three cousins who are like half Mexicans, like Finnish. My my aunt is Finnish and then uh, she has a Mexican husband. So three of my cousins are actually half Mexicans. So they speak both Finnish and Spanish. They live here in Finland. That's cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, their father is more from the South. I can't re remember the name now, but, uh, so you were born in, what, what, what was the city called? Tama, Tamaulipas? Mat Matamoros? No? Matamoros is the city and yeah. Tamaulipas is the state. Okay. Matamoros, the city. Uh, how, how many people live in Matamoros? I think, uh, it's like, uh, Five hundred thousand, uh, I think, uh, around that that uh, number. Okay, so in 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 Mexico, that's quite small. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's it's quite small. Uh, I mean, if you compare to to other big cities, uh, like for example, Monterrey or or um, yeah, it's a small. Yeah, here it would be like second or third biggest in finland <laughs> yeah oh. we, we only have five and a half million in total in total and uh, the biggest city helsinki the capital has only like five hundred thousand. but if you combine with the espo and vanta which are at more actually like one big city the capital city region uh, then it would have like 1.1 million but if you count them separately then like 500 600 thousand is number one so yeah, and Mexico has uh, more than 100 million people, or I, I forgot them. Oh. Uh, I don't remember now, but yeah, I mean, Mexico has a lot of people, and, and yeah, it's very big. Yeah. Um, so you were born in 2002 or three? Three. Three, yeah. And... Uh, I, I guess both of your parents spoke like Spanish as a native language or yes. And yeah, they're Mexican too. Yeah. And what about your, your parents generation? Can they generally speak like other foreign languages did they have at school? Like your parents or grandparents, uh, do they speak only Spanish or how is it done in your family? Well, in the case of my family, uh, my mother just can speak Spanish, but she used to to study English and and French with my father, uh, and my father uh, he can speak uh, Spanish, Portuguese, a little bit of, of Italian, and the the last time I remember he was studying English. So yeah, he's 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 better at, at languages. Yeah, and uh, like you you speak re really well uh, English. Is it common now within the you know the young generation? Does everyone speak very good 
English there? Uh, well, let me thank you. Um, well, uh, I think it's it's better uh, with the new generations, uh, the English, but not not everyone can can speak uh, as good. I mean, I, I am I am studying at a language school because I want to get the the TOEFL, so the TOEFL certification. So that's the reason because. Uh, for the last two years, I've been studying uh, English, so my level is, is as good as now, but it's not everyone. I mean, uh, yeah. it, 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 has increased, it has increased the level of English in Mexico, but not everyone. I mean, just if you are like really into the, the, the language. Yeah, okay, because I, I don't know. I, I have been in Mexico once. Uh, I flew to Cancun. I didn't stay actually in Cancun. I was in Playa del Carmen and then I traveled a bit in Yucatan. So in Tulum and I forgot uh, all the cities where I was, but I was like a week or two, but I only spoke Spanish at that time. So I don't uh, know how it, how it it is uh, speaking only English. Um, so that's why I'm curious about this. And do you think it also affects if you, like in your case, you live close to the border? Uh, are there more people, like more Mexicans who speak English because you live close to the border? Yeah, I mean, it helps. But uh, as, as I said, uh, not everyone, because, for example, if you go to here in Mexico, uh, even in the... I mean, we're in the border, but if you go, for example, to a gas station and maybe you speak English to the people, uh, they, they can understand you. I yeah. mean, I think you you have you could have more uh, luck if you speak to younger people. But yeah, it helps. I mean, a lot of people here, uh, for example, uh, they they born in the United States, but they live in Mexico but they go to school in the United States. Okay. Or oh, a lot of people here uh, works in the United States or has family there. So yeah, the the language is the language is very is very like important because for example, if you go to America, well, the South America, uh, sorry, for example, Texas, you can speak to them in, in English or Spanish and they can understand you. So I think it's an advantage because, well, it's it's a it's a coin with two faces because if you are like like lazy or you just speak Spanish, they can understand you and speak and speak to you Spanish. So you can you cannot really practice your English. So yeah, yeah it's it's like kind of that. Yeah. How how far is the border actually? Is it like how many kilometers is it to the border? Well, uh, it it depends uh, which part of the city you are, but uh, well, for example, when I was at at my when I was at high school, the border was really really close. I mean, like one one thousand. No, no, sorry like 100 ki ki uh, no like 50 kilometers from from my from my high school so for example if if i if i wanted to go to america uh, just uh, I, I don't know for example i i just ha i just have to walk i i just yeah. have uh, i just have it to walk so so it's really close but yeah you need to have a visa so yeah, that's a yeah. question because uh, that's a matter because not everyone has a visa. You have to apply for it. Yeah, yeah. In in your uh, childhood, how, how was it? Uh, how was the language education like? How old were you when you started learning English in school? Okay, well. Um, when I was a child, like uh, when I have like when I had like five years, I went to a to a kindergarten 
but a, a bilingual kindergarten. So they teach us uh, English, but it was like very basics because we, we were ch children. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. for example, like uh, the colors, how to say your name. But yeah, it, it was very basic. And uh, after that, I went to a, a public uh, elementary school. So, so they 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 teach us uh, they teach us uh, English there, but it's like yeah, very basic or maybe it's not it's not uh, as good as if you go to a to a bilingual school. So yeah, I was I I went to a public uh, elementary school, then I went to uh to uh, I think it's the middle school, it's it's the middle school and uh, it public as well so they're, they're really like like um uh, like yeah like for example when i was 17 it, it was when covid so i had like 17 years and i started to watching movies uh, on english in english so it was the first time i really like kind of had a really interested on the language because before uh, it was like, oh, okay, English. Oh, it's fine. Yeah. Like, yeah, I mean, I, I don't really need it. Here in Mexico, you don't really need it, uh, the English. So it's like comfortable. But when I was uh, at the, the quarantine, I was in my home, so I, I couldn't uh, go to anywhere. So I was like watching uh, TV in English and I was like, whoa, uh, now I can understand more of the language. And and then I, I entered in in the in the language school that I talked to you about, uh, and yeah, that's why I I really improved my English because before uh, my English was like like one percent, like just good day, uh, yeah. hello, and yeah. So did you watch TV or on online Netflix or YouTube or both? Well, that that's a good question. Um, you I mean Netflix and YouTube, but for example, uh, in the past, um, we live in the border, so we can hear the red the radio of of America. Oh, so, okay, yeah. So yeah, for example, I remember when when I was a kid, uh, I I listened to a to a station from America from a, a rock station. Uh, it was uh. 94.5 the rock station so uh, it helps because for example i mean i was a child uh, i didn't know english but uh, i like it to listen to music in english so when i was uh, at 17 uh, i i was like just uh, listen to to for example the, the radio from the radio from america like uh, sucks in English, so yeah, it helps the the fact that you are in in the border because you can hear the the radio of 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 another countries. Yeah, yeah, but on TV you didn't have like the American channels, just the radio. Well, I I think, I think if if you if you had like a like a good connection or like a good um uh, like a good uh, anthem the you can you can watch the, the tv from america mm. e even if you don't pay the if you don't pay for for habit i mean like yeah. public yes but but i i, I didn't search it um uh, uh, now but yeah i mean uh, i didn't watch tv but i think if you if you are looking for for it i think you you can uh, you can find it and in Mexico, do you have uh, subtitles or is everyone everything dubbed in, in Spanish? Like the TV shows? Well, uh, yeah, everything is, is dubbed in Spanish. But for example, in the in the theaters, in the cinema, you can find like the the movie with subs. I mean, like English dub, but subs in Spanish. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and and the movie dubbed as well, so it's it's a good it's a good thing I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here almost nothing is dubbed, or only some kids uh, 
progress program sometimes so mostly we all, all, always have like the tv shows or movies in the original language whatever the original language is and then like finish subtitles and yeah i think that's really good here but uh so do you think is in mexico you should also have more like the original versions and then subtitles or what do you think about this well, I think here in Mexico, it's it's more like uh, everything dubbed, like everything in Spanish. But if you if you search for things in English, uh, you you can find it. For example, here, uh, well, it, it's not like that. But you can hear, for example, people use maybe some some expressions on English. Uh, even even Spanish words has uh, has origins in English. For example, uh, troca. It's it's like truck, or 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 that that kind of 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 things. It's a little bit uh, like funny, but uh, you can understand the influence uh, from English. I mean, even for example, you can hear sometimes uh, like uh, English. Uh, like like music in English. Well, I mean that that's in that's all all over the world. But what I'm referring to that it's that for example, you can watch um, for example, um, uh, even if you are uh, going out like like an like in a weekend, sometimes American people like uh not uh, like a uh, Mexican American not uh American uh, people like like British ancestry. They, they they come here in Mexico and they go uh, for ice cream or that that stuff or even they they come here and they they buy like like uh, yeah the things for their house like milk uh, eggs uh, yeah they come to the supermarket here sometimes so it's uh, so much uh, cheaper so ju they just come there yeah. and go back yeah. Well, that's funny we have also a bit of that here in some border towns like uh, especially between the border of finland and sweden some people go from here to sweden to uh buy like to ikea because here in northern finland we don't have any ikeas the closest one is like in kuopio which is like probably 600 kilometers from here so but the closest one is from uh to me in Sweden, which is only 200 kilometers. But, it, and also in Northern Finland, we have a border with uh, Norway. And uh, I, I lived in one small village of only 30, 40 people. They have like two shops and it's mostly Norwegians coming to Finland. They just buy there and get some gas and then they go back to Norway. So I guess it's the same in, any country where, where there's border so uh americans don't need a visa they they can freely come to mexico to buy some groceries and go back right yeah yeah and how hard is it to get a visa for for mexicans to america well i i think it's it, it's a, it's a little bit hard, hard. it depends uh, because they they evol evaluate your your for example your uh if you are studying uh your like financial situation uh why do you want the visa so yeah it, it's a little bit hard to get it yeah and have you have you ever been to to the u.s uh, uh, yeah uh, i mean it's uh, here it's like uh, not not very difficult to I mean, if you have a visa, uh, you can go uh, to America. I mean, I've been there like the 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 past Saturday. I went okay. there. Okay. Yeah. How many times have you been there in total? Mm, a lot. I mean, like I don't know, maybe uh, five hundred times. But I mean, yeah. Okay. Uh, but I mean, I am like. 
it, I am I I don't go too often. There there's people like, uh, like go there a lot of uh, maybe every day. They 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 went there for for a study or for work. So yeah, it's it's common that that people come and and across. Okay, what kind of a visa is that? I I guess it's because there are so many different visas and. It's it's just the visa for for traveling. It's not a visa of a study of work. It's it's just traveling. Yeah, yeah. So, for example, uh, if uh, Finnish people want to go to Russia, we always need a visa. They have like some short term visas, but then they have like which are valid for one year or two years, and then you can go there and back. So, is it a bit similar there because? You, People who live in uh, Matamoros are so Tamaulipas. close. Uh, tam yeah, tam in the yeah state of Tamaulipas. Uh, so is, is there like two year visa that you can go there and back? Like, what, what, what? Uh, because I want to understand how 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 can they just go one day and just come back the same day? What kind of a visa do they have okay well uh, I, i'm not sure about uh, the visas of of everyone but for example with the visa that i have uh, it's for traveling so you can go uh, for Amer uh, to america uh, for example you have like uh i don't remember the exact um, amount of days but you can stay there and and then you have to to come back to mexico Okay. So so yeah, you can use, uh, but you have to renovate. I think it's like, I I don't remember how many years you can you can have it, but uh, after that time it it expires and you have oh. to to renovate. Yeah. Oh okay okay yeah okay I I got it now, yeah. Um, and when you were a kid, did you have any other options in your schools to learn other languages than? Uh, English, other foreign languages. Let me think. Mm, I don't remember. I think just English, but uh, re recently, uh, I've been the the other day. Uh, I've seen a school. Uh, I think it, it's it's a it was a elementary school, a private elementary school, but. It's it, it was a bilingual school, so they had uh, English, uh, I French, and even uh, Mandarin Chinese, and yeah. I was like, whoa, okay. that that's cool, but because yeah. here the the most uh, common it's if if it's a if it is a, a bilingual school, they just have English and French, but yeah. uh, I remember seeing that with Ch Chinese, and I was like, oh, that that's new, that's that's very nice. That's really good. Actually, I I spoke yesterday with a Costa Rican, and uh, he he speaks Chinese. He lives actually in China now, and he said that yeah, there are more and more Chinese classes in Costa Rica too, and it, it seems like in Mexico also it, it's increasing. Do do you know any any people in Mexico like your friends? Any anyone who speaks Chinese or other languages than English, other foreign languages. Yeah, uh, I have a friend uh, from the school. She, she's a girl and she can speak uh, English and French. And I have uh, other friends as well who can speak uh, French. But uh, other than that, uh, I don't have it. I mean, it's, it's, it's uh, quite rare. Uh, I have a, a uncle. He can he can speak uh, English and Japanese. So wow. so yeah, that's cool. And and why, I met why Japanese? Uh, why Japanese? Has he lived there oh, or? Okay, well it's it's a a good history, but um, he he likes uh, like the Japanese culture like. Uh, samurais uh, anime uh, all that stuff so he he went when he was like my age i think like 
18 or 20, he he learned the, the Japanese. He went to a school in Monterrey. Uh, Monterrey, it's a big city, so they have a lot of immigrants. So they learned the language there because he 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 liked the the Japanese culture. Yeah. And he introduced me as well to the Japanese culture because when I was a child, he he put like the Zodiac Knights. It's a it's an anime from Japan, and and I and I watch it and I like it and and yeah now now I am learning Japanese as well. Oh, so because of your uncle and because he introduced the Japanese culture, the anime you also started learning like uh, Japanese yeah but it was like indirectly because he he didn't um uh, say to me like they're Japanese or something yeah, yeah. He, he didn't do any of that but he he showed me that that series like Pokemon Pokemon uh Zodiac Knights uh Dragon Ball uh very popular ones and I mean I, I was a child so so I watched that on TV and I like it. And with with the pass of the years, uh, I I learned more about the Japanese culture, like like uh, samurais, ninjas, and and all that stuff. And and now, yeah, I I'm learning the language. It's it's very very fun. Yeah, that's funny. It's, it started from there. I actually watched also Pokemon, Dragon Ball, Sailor Moon, other whatever. Yeah, but especially those. I I really like Pokemon and Dragon Ball, and my sister watched Sailor Moon. It it be first at three o'clock maybe. It was like Pokemon, and then in the in in the between, I think it was Sailor Moon, and after that, Dragon Ball. So we were like a few hours watching uh, in a row, like all the TV shows with my sister. Um, so in your case, it was in dubbed in in Spanish all those yeah shows. yeah yeah um and when did you start like how many years ago was it when you decided that you want to learn the language as well like it it was in in 2021 so i think maybe it's now it's like uh two years or or maybe in august in august it, it will be uh, three years so so yeah i started learn, learning the language at the uh, online school so it, it was very comfortable to me because uh for example if if i couldn't watch uh it was a, a live streaming so if if i couldn't watch the live streaming i had like the the the, the class um uh, in in my computer uh, recorded oh, so okay yeah, yeah be very very comfortable and, and very funny as well yeah so if you couldn't attend the class you could see the recording afterwards yeah and it's cool actually i i am still at, at the school learning it uh learning the language because uh the language is it's very very different from from european languages it's it's hard uh, at the beginning. Yeah. How 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 long did it take to learn hiragana, katakana in the beginning? Did you start from hiragana or katakana? Uh, I I don't remember. I think the uh, hiragana because I it, it was more more easy. Well well for me, uh, it took me like like two months or three, but. And uh, I was like, uh, because for example, the, there's people there who learned hiragana and katakana like in two days, so so it it's it's very very fast. So it it took me more a lot a lot more time because uh, I was not doing the the right things. So when when I when I like like understood that I was like, oh, I'm wasting my time. And and I did the right things and, and then learned the, the the alphabet because it's very different. They have two alphabets and then they have a kanji. Yeah. So that's a, a hard one. Can you know, uh, well, you already know the Kiragana and Katakana. What do you think? How, how 
how much can you read the kanjis? Is it still hard? I, I of course it's hard, but how do you what do you estimate the, how how many kanjis do you know? Approximately, it's really hard to know, but uh, do you have any estimate? Well, I think now I know I know like maybe one hundred or one hundred and fifty, but are like the most important, like. Like the the candies that that are really useful in the everyday. I mean, the, there's other uh, important candies, but uh, as the the thing with the kanji is that a kanji, it's not like for example, like the alphabet, like hello, everyone's uh, 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 all the time means hello. Like the kanji, it, it has the, their own meaning, so. You have to learn the the radicals. It's like the the strokes that that create the kanji, so you can really understand the the kanji. So yeah, it it could take. I mean, if you want to learn like like kanji, it it it's a question that it's a matter of of years. It's not like oh, okay in one day I'm gonna learn all the the kanji. No, it's it's not. <laughs> It's not like hiragana and katakana. Yeah, katakana. Yeah, yeah. It, it it takes years. So yeah, I I mean in that uh yeah now now I I know like like one hundred fifty or maybe two hundred, uh, between one hundred and two hundred, but yeah I'm still learning it because it's it's a hard one. Yeah, I I agree. I so I I'm just a beginner in Japanese and maybe a high, like upper beginner or lower intermediate in Chinese, but I cannot read Chinese that much yet. Um, and I had the beginner class in Japanese, but I didn't have time to continue. So I, we had on the first course, uh, hiragana. I learned the hiragana, but now it was like more than a year and I have been so busy with everything. And I didn't have to ta the time to learn on my own the kataganas, and then I would have needed to like learn the kanjis on my own, like a little bit every every day. But it's it's really hard. The, I think the Japanese writing is probably one of the hardest ones in the world. Do you agree? Yeah, I, I could send you uh, the page where where I learned the katakana and hiragana uh, very fast, if you want. Sure, sure. You can you can send it later. Yeah. Yeah, and I I want to ask you because uh, I've heard uh, that you say that you don't have uh, enough time, and I think I can understand that because uh, I mean, how many languages do you speak? Because I've seen that you that you made podcasts on on a sw Swedish. Finnish, Spanish, English, and Portuguese. So uh, yeah, yeah, I, I can. I have good enough skills to make the podcast on ten languages, and then Ooh, then I've had I have like 10, 10, 11 more languages that I'm like a beginner or intermediate. But you know, my for example, my Indonesian is okay. I can I could survive, but I couldn't do a podcast because I part like these are spontaneous conversations so in indonesian i would be like oh my god i don't know how to say this so um yeah when when you have so many languages it's it's really hard especially because now i i, I also have my own family uh we have a seven month old baby so at like i i started last year computer science studies so all all of this combined is I don't have the time that I had when I was like your age, like 20, but that, that's why when I was 20 to 20, 20 to 30, I would say, because I was single until I was 31 or something. Um, so I, I put all my time to, into language learning. That's why now at this age, I can, uh, I can speak well enough to make uh, the podcast in many languages, but uh, it has taken, forever and now you know maintaining all the languages and at the same time getting stuff done with school and 
my family and everything. It's it, it, it it's really hard. It's really hard. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah you you have to enjoy now all the time you have and put it in into your uh, passions whatever it is so yeah so it's it, it's not easy and getting my level in japanese or chinese higher it, it, it's really hard because among the 10 11 languages that i want to I want to improve. There are like also Arabic and Turkish and Hindi. So many new writing systems and so little time. But yeah, I, I will tr try to improve. Like not every, nowadays, I can't do it every day. But whenever I have time, I, I try to maintain at least something. Yeah, but what about you? Uh, what else are you doing in life now? How, do you have all the time you want for you know language learning or um, other passions that you have? Well, uh, now uh, I'm on vacations, so yeah, I can I can spend uh, more time with with languages. But usually, uh, I'm studying at the university. I'm studying uh, business management engineering. So, oh, so business. So, so the name is business management engineering, or do you study business manage, management and engineering? No, it's it's business management engineering. Oh, okay. I have okay. I have never heard about that because I I already have a degree in business management. And uh, now I, I'm studying like engineering, computer science, it's part of like engineering. So so what exactly is business management engineering? Um, well, you learn uh, how to uh, manage business, but with the point of view uh, of an engineering, of an engineer. So uh, we have uh, uh, accountability, uh, we have administration, but we have uh, maths as well, and we we have, uh, for example, uh, statistics and prob probability probability. So you have to to see the the enterprise that you are managing as a as an engineering. It's it's like the combination of of uh, an industrial engineering and uh, business administration so you have uh, both worlds oh okay and how long have you studied is it uh, your first year second year now it's it's my my third year and because i i started the the school uh, in 2021 so i think the the next year then the next year I'm, I'm gonna graduate yeah so I, i'm very excited for that yeah so you're gonna be you, you you're gonna get the bachelor's degree yeah yeah and are, are you going to continue and get a master's or what's what's the plan well uh, uh i don't know because um when i when I finish school, uh, I want to. I I would like to live in Japan, so, so I am like now I am like seeing, and uh, the, the the jobs opportunities, and and that stuff, and as well as as I would like to to search for for example if if I can to make studies in Japan because mm. it's it's really hard to get the, the visa to to stay there. So you have to, to be there uh, for work or for studies. So yeah, yeah um, I, I mean, I, I mean, uh, I'm on that. So next, next year, uh, like before summer, you will be uh, ready with your studies, right? Like in, in one year. Like la next May June, you will be get your masters. No, uh, bachelor's. Right. Yeah. 
Well, so, uh, so, you, so you plan to go then maybe in summer or after after this summer to Japan if you find a job or place to study? Yeah, I mean, uh, my my plan, like, I would like to find a, a Japanese enterprise here in Mexico, a Japanese company, and then... Oh. Uh, spent uh, like I don't know maybe one or two years there and and seek the opportunity to today to send me to Japan mm. but uh, at the same time I, I am searching in in online uh, the Japanese companies yeah. so so to to seek for more more opportunities so yeah I'm on that oh okay so you're currently also trying to find something uh, like a Japanese company work, which is in in your city or somewhere in Mexico. Yeah, that that sounds like a really good plan because I, I guess maybe not that many Mexicans like have Japanese skills, and if you're there, probably you have really good possibilities to go to Japan. Or I'm not sure. Maybe they would like to have you in Mexico because. Or I don't know how it how how it works. Do do you think, um, if you find a Japanese company in Mexico, they would, they would need you to like transfer to Japan. Well, uh, uh, I'm not sure. Uh, that's the reason because uh, I am searching uh, online too. But for example, uh, people have have said me. Uh, has said me that, for example, if if I go to to a to a company here in my city, maybe they 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 don't they won't send me to Japan. So I need to seek in in another big cities. For example, Reynosa, uh, it's a city near from Matamoros, okay. uh, or for example, uh, Monterrey, in Nuevo León. So yeah, maybe I uh, I'll have to to move to another city or even a state. Yeah, yeah, All right. But you also have the option maybe directly also searching from Japan or was that what you're also doing? Yeah, you can you can search online. Uh, actually, the other day I searched, uh, for example, uh, jobs in japan i don't remember how how i write it but it was something like jobs in japan for mexican uh, uh business management engineering and like my details and it sent me like for example uh, jobs applications like uh business like um uh, in industrial manager or business manager or or jobs yeah. application for for foreigners mm -hmm. uh, that's that's the 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 matter for foreigners so the, there's there's application there there's job but you have to to search it you have to to really really seek it yeah 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 and i guess the companies who are in in japan and searching inside japan probably have quite high like language skill requirements for like uh, Japanese skills yeah um uh, i I've seen that Japan uh more and more uh, wants uh foreigners because oh, okay. they have uh, international companies so so yeah I, I think it's a it's a good opportunity yeah and is there any particular city or region in Japan where where you want to go or is it like what whatever place it is because if you find a job then you will just go there where the job is yeah uh, kind of that but I, I would like to find that job as a well make my, my career like in a company in a Japanese company or if it isn't the case like an English teacher because uh, I want to go to Japan because uh, not just for the job, because for example the job maybe I can I can do it here in Mexico, but I would like to live in Japan because 
uh, I have always been interested in in Japan and and the culture. So yeah, I would like to live in Tokyo a few years. In Tokyo, yeah. 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 Are there any other places in Japan that interest you? And uh, also, what interests you so much in, in Tokyo? Okay, well, because uh, I, I like the... I've heard that in Tokyo, uh, Japanese people are a little bit more shy or like they're very in into them, them themselves. For example, if you go to another, like, for example, I don't know, Osaka or something, people there are more like, like charm, like people. But yeah. what I like of Tokyo, it's, it's the, the energy that it's, I mean, it's like, in, like New York, but, but Japanese. Yeah, like yeah. I I would like to go to to the to the Shinkansen the the train and the metro and and live in in uh I don't know maybe a small apartment there and eat and eat ramen I mean it it's yeah. a little bit nerdy but but I, I like that I, I would like to to experience that the like the the Japanese the Japanese um uh, idea what foreigners have about Japan yeah. Yeah. And uh, okay, now it's really early to ask this, but do you have any plan how long you, you would be in Japan? I guess it, it's hard to say because if you find someone you want to spend your time, like life, maybe you will stay the rest of your life. But now is it, do you have any initial plan? Maybe two years or, and then just see how it goes or then come back or do you have any, any plans for it? For that or just go and see what happens yeah i mean um my plan is uh to go there for uh for example a uh, get a job in a company for example i don't know a contract of three years so i go there and try to extend that time for example uh, to I don't know if if it's three years extend that to I don't know maybe six years, uh, stay stay so uh, stay as much as possible, and then uh, I I I really like I really would like to to live in in Europe, so maybe uh, my my time in Japan it's over okay now go 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 to Europe, that's why I'm I learning um another another European languages because I would like to live in Europe in the future like like yeah. forever like oh. yeah um, make my life there oh okay so if if you're not staying in Japan you you will want to go to Europe yes uh but so is there also still the possibility that if Jap if you like Japan you will just stay in Japan but or do you want to experience both, like living in Japan and Europe? Yeah, I mean, I would like to experience both, uh, both but uh, you know how, how life is. If, yeah. if maybe I really <laughs> love Japan and I don't know, maybe I uh, I met a, a girl there. Maybe, maybe, I don't know, maybe I can stay forever in Japan. I, I don't know, but my plan, my original plan is to stay there for a few years and then move, move to Europe. Yeah, I, I understand. You, 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 you can't plan life. You never. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we we are not like like robots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but you never know. Maybe you meet someone in Japan who's from Europe or from other continents. You end up somewhere else. Uh, but now in Europe, what which countries interest you the most? Oh, that's that's a really good question. Well, for now, the, the the countries it's Japan and maybe maybe some some Eastern Europe country like like I don't know maybe Poland or or even a Slovakia, but yeah, I'm not sure. sure. Yeah, yeah, I'm not sure now because yeah. uh, I, I'm too young and. And I would like to to see what's happened in the future. But for now, my my like European country 
like for living it will be maybe Poland or or Slovakia or what, Slovenia. Why, why, why Poland, Slovakia, or Slovenia? That's pretty random. You know, everyone says usually Great Britain, Germany, France, Spain, oh, yeah, I mean, Italy. So that's really surprising. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Western Western countries are are really good, but in the in the I've been uh, learning Russian, so I've seen that there's a lot of Eastern countries that they speak Russian, and and I like the culture, uh, because, uh, they are like more traditional, uh, I mean because, for example. Well, now it's a, it's a little bit difficult uh, for the war in, in in Ukraine, and and that's a that that's real really bad. But for example, uh, I would like to live in a in a country in a Eastern Europe country because I like the the culture and I like the the weather. I mean, I I know there's places in Europe where there's uh, like that kind of weather, but for now. What kind uh, of weather I, are you uh like drinking? like you know snow and and really cold because here in Mexico it's really hot. Well, especially in my city. Uh for example, I, I, I'm not sure about the, the temperature on on Finland, but I've searched that it's like uh, 17 uh, Celsius degrees uh in Hels in Helsinki. Well yeah. here in Mexico it's like like theory five, theory six. He yeah. here in Matamosta Olipa, so it's really hot. Uh, I haven't seen uh snow. M maybe when I was a, a baby, but yeah. I mean I was a baby. I I, yeah. I didn't remember. It. So yeah, that's why I I would like to live in a country with with the snow and and a more and a more uh like like cold weather. So yeah, that, that's a reason because if it's not uh, like some Eastern country, maybe, I don't know, maybe Denmark or, or Swiss, but it's 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 not easy as as I as I could think because to live there I have to to have the European passport. Yeah. So so yeah, yeah. That's that's what I, I said before that I'm not sure now because I'm too young. So yeah, I, I need to to get the European passport and all that stuff. Mm. Yeah, if if you want if you like cold weather and snow, Finland is good, Sweden, Norway, like uh here in northern Europe, we have like for example in in my city, Ro Rovaniemi, uh we got snow last October, like mid or late October. Uh, okay, first it melted, but since the beginning of November, we had like permanent snow until January, February, March, April, May, I would say May. And I think one month ago, we still had some small piles of snow. Uh, it's not the same in the Southern Finland, like Helsinki, they, they don't have that much snow as we have and here it was like the coldest weather here was during the winter it was like minus 40 but i mean in in, in at night at night time daytime temperatures were like the lowest were minus uh, 30 once my car didn't work and I, I i worked this winter season as a northern light guide and I had to go there because there were like tourists waiting for me to come and take them to the tour. So I I decided that I have to I, I will take my bicycle because if the taxi is so expensive here that I wouldn't have got any any money from that day if I took the taxi. So I cycled one hour in minus no that was minus 30 or was it 25 anyways really cold so that was horrible <laughs> but but you will find a lot of snow here ukraine is quite warm actually because ukraine is so much uh more to the south of course they have if they have some mountains there and like 
south western Ukraine, the Carpathians, and um, well, Poland has has also some mountains in the south. So, so yeah, they have they have also a lot of snow there and Slovakia I think they have the Tatra mountains or some mountains so they also have snow uh, but Eastern Europe I, I would definitely recommend because it's really cheap from the Baltic countries which are like some say they are like part of Eastern Europe some say not but after Baltic countries they are like the Eastern Europe country Eastern European countries from Belarus to southern europe and they are so cheap after i mean compared to finland and norway denmark sweden it's really really expensive here but when i traveled to those countries i was like wow it's i i spend three four times less so yeah i've been to poland i've briefly been to Slovakia but it was like one I didn't stay overnight so I don't know that much about Slovakia uh, how how did you get interested in specifically Poland and Slovakia and Slova Slovenia did you um, see something on Instagram or YouTube or where yeah uh, I mean um, at the first uh, I've started like learning about uh, uh, Slavic culture. Uh, for example, I I started like like learning the Russian language uh, because I, I've seen that yeah it's a Russian language it's very popular like for example in in Eastern Europe uh, like in the Baltics uh, Ukraine uh, Belarus uh, even in Kazakhstan. So so yeah, it was very helpful, and and I was like, oh, it it will be nice to to go to live in Russia and and have a have a Russian girlfriend. I don't know, maybe a wife in the future. <laughs> yeah. But but yeah, because they're they're really pretty. But I've seen uh, the things that that are going that are going on in, in Russia, like like the war and that stuff. And now I'm like, well, maybe Russia it's it's not as good it's it's not as good good as I think as I thought. So that's why I, I'm looking for another is Eastern Europe um, countries. But but I don't know. I mean, if if in the future uh, I get the European passport, uh, I don't know. Maybe uh, I'll end I don't know in in Swiss or or Luxembourg. Uh, I don't know. But but yeah, uh, I would like to live in Eastern Europe. If it isn't the case, well, maybe Denmark or or Finland or or yeah. You have to be rich uh, <laughs> if you if you choose like Denmark or uh, like Finland, especially Denmark because Denmark is even more expensive than Finland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I hope I hope the war ends because uh, yeah, we would also like to go to Russia. Uh, so my wife, she's Ukrainian, but she speaks a Russian as her mother tongue because like it's about half and half in Ukraine. Uh, about half speak Ukraine Ukrainian as their mother tongue, and around half Russian. So my my wife talks uh, Russian to our son. So, so I'm also learning Slavic culture. I, I, I don't know everything about it. So when we have some uh, festivals during the year, some holidays, like New Year, Christmas, I, I always learn something new. Like last year, uh, I found out the, okay, I knew about this, but not that clearly that they have like the, they, they have different dates because they have, the different cal calendar so when we have our christmas they have their like old orthodox christmas or something uh, like one week afterwards so we we actually had two christmases two new years here uh in our family and also my russian is not super perfect uh the only russian podcast episode i, I did with my wife uh I need more practice before I, I make more. 
but um, yeah, it's really interesting. And we, we would also want to do the Trans-Siberian Railway. Do you know about this? Like the oh, yeah. uh, going from Moscow to Vladivostok. And I, I really hope that in maybe a few years when our child can walk we, we could all go and spend maybe the summer or like two three months just going from moscow to vladivostok and but stopping stopping every day in some small villages and spending the night and that would be really cool how how did you start learning russian how how, how long ago was it and how did it start well, I think um, I have been studying Russian for like one year. Uh, I started at first uh, in in YouTube, uh, in YouTube watching videos. Uh, I mean, f for English and Japanese, I I had tutors. I have uh, teachers. Yeah. Uh, I had I had as a schools, but with Russian, it. It was uh, just by myself, uh, videos, uh, uh, movies, movies on Netflix, uh, series, and and apps. And can you yeah, that's... can you re remember the names? If you have some good recommendations, if some people are also learning Russian, maybe they are interested to know. Okay, well, yeah. Uh, for example, in Netflix. Uh, Netflix has, uh, I think it's Luce Chomludi. It's in a, in English. It's like better than humans, something like that. It's a uh, but the series. robots was it? The... Yeah, yeah, robots. Ah, I I think I I've seen almost uh, the whole season. Yeah, that that one and. Wait, was it the, was it the one where there was a family and they had the robot nanny or something like that? Yes. And then the father, like, had a crush on her or. Uh, but anyway, yeah, yeah. It, I, I can't remember because it was like three years ago when I did. But yeah, okay, so this one. And Sluga Naroda, I think it it was. It's the, it's like in. It, Ser good servant something like that it's a i don't remember now because i watched it, uh the series like um like the the past year but it was about the president of ukraine actually the real president uh Zelensky, he he was the the main actor he he was rolling the play of the pre uh, like playing, playing the role of presidents of, yeah, yeah, the oh, yeah, yeah. I have I have only seen a few episodes, but my wife said uh, it was really good. She saw it years ago. What was what was the name again? Uh, I think in English it's good good servant. Good servant. Sluga yeah. Naroda. I think it's in in Russian. Sluga Naroda. Yeah, but if you name the the main actor uh, Zelensky, I think everyone who will search it. Yeah, yeah. On YouTube, have you seen like I I've watched, for example, a lot of easy Russian street interviews. Have you seen? Have you watched Easy Russian? Yeah, me too. Uh, easy Russian and. Uh, fl there's another channel uh, called uh, Fluent in Russian. It it's from from a guy from Russia, and uh, I don't remember the names of of the other channels. I I'm trying to remember the name of the of the teacher. She she was a girl. Uh, well, I I can't remember now. But yeah, I'm learning a lot of uh, of YouTube. I mean, YouTube it's it's very useful uh, nowadays. Yeah, uh, I I have one recommendation. I don't know if you know. There's a channel called Star Media. They have two channels. One is uh, only in Russian, and the other one they have like English subtitles. So Star Media English. If you type on YouTube, they have a lot of movies and also. Uh, some series 
which were really good. I, I watched a lot of those, especially between 2017 to 20, 2019. Uh, they have like comedy, romantic, like all the genres. And they also had some historical series. Like, for example, one that I really enjoyed was about the Romanov family. So they portrayed uh, every single like R Romanov uh, star or queen, and they showed their life, and it it was it was really interesting. If uh, someone is into history, that's a really good one. But Star Media, you you can find hundreds hundreds of movies and series from that YouTube channel. Yeah, thank you, thank you. I, I'll definitely search it. Yeah. And so after a year, what do you think uh, about Russian? What's what's your level? What what are the difficult? What have been the difficulties for you? Okay. Well, uh, I I've, I've stopped a little bit like the the Russian learning. Uh, it's more now. It's more like in a passive way because uh, I am focusing more on my English and my Japanese because well uh, I am going to to make the to make the TOEFL certificate so I have to to prepare myself to that mm, yeah. but with Ru with Russian uh, I think now I I can speak like like super well but I can defend myself yeah, uh, yeah. for example uh, I've heard uh, in tandem, uh, I've assisted to to like parties where where everyone can can chat, and and for example, uh, I realized that now, at my level, I can understand more than I can speak, so so I think for me it's it's great because I mean I, I have been learning just for like one year, and and now I can understand the the most part of the of the talk, so I think it's it's good. It it's very good if you are on that level after one year. I started Russian 2015 and I felt like I I couldn't survive before 2021 or two. Of course I had pauses and you know I had so much going on but I felt like my Russian learning was so slow and even now I have some problems when my wife speaks to our son and I, I'm listening and I'm like, yeah, what was that word? Or when my mother-in-law was here um, and when she was speaking to me because uh, she doesn't speak English and she speaks, she uses more slang. And I'm like, ah, I felt like I don't even speak this language, even though I, I can, I, I survived with Russian, but uh, I was really frustrated. Have you had any frustration in Russian or any any language? Well, mm, let, let me think about it. Well, uh, or, or, are are you always motivated? Do you have like fr frust uh like periods of frustration ever? Yeah, yeah. For example, with with Japanese, uh like when when i in in 2022 uh i was like studying the language for like one year but then i was like kind of of a little bit fr frustrated or, or not frustrated but like like a little bit bored uh like like i i don't want to do this uh so i i had like a like a like a break uh from from that like like I just want to live my my life uh, freely, and and then I I started again a uh, few months later, uh, and I was like, okay, uh, now I, I'm full I'm fully recharged. Uh, I can do whatever now, and then I started again with the Japanese. Yeah, yeah. And how did you get the motivation then? Uh, sorry, can you repeat that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, when you felt frustrated, how, how, like, how did you get the motivation to continue? Oh, okay. Well, um, 
for example, in the case of Japanese, uh, what, what I, okay, it was in 2022. So I was like, okay, I, I don't want to do this like for, for, for now, I don't want to do this because it's hard and, and I've been studying at the language for one year. So I don't want to do this. So the take take the break, it, it helped me. And then I like started like um like with the language, but like in a passive way, like just watching anime. And it's like, okay, oh well, I mean the I, I was like, oh the the Japanese uh, it's really like like uh, like rowing because now I can understand more from the the anime. Yeah. So I, I think uh, I need to to maybe do do it again now. So that's that's why like like I I had to take a break and then start again like like in a passive way and yeah. then like okay I I need to do this okay I, I can with Japanese no nobody can defeat me. Okay, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I understand. I I also have had many pauses with different languages. Like for example, 2017, I went to China for the whole summer after only one year of studying Chinese. Um so I, I but but that was one once a week. Uh I I couldn't understand almost anything they answered. They could understand when I spoke, but they didn't understand I, I couldn't understand their answer. So when I got back to Finland, I was like, I, I can't. So for three months, I didn't do anything with uh, Chinese, but then little by little, I got back. So yeah, it's important to have those pauses. Uh, so you have mentioned now many like resources uh, from all the languages, like all the shows and um, TV shows, YouTube videos, but do you use any applications okay yes uh, i like to use uh, well i use uh, duolingo uh, i use uh, busu i use uh, hello talk and tandem and i like tandem and hello talk because you can enter uh, in the in the parties in the chat rooms and you can talk with people from a, a from all over the world, so so it's it's cool because, for example, when I was uh, like the first time I I entered like in I don't know maybe in Hello Talk, I I was like trying to to improve my Japanese, so when when I was there, uh, sometimes or a, a lot of times uh, maybe Japanese people or Asian people and speak English so I was forced to speak the Japanese so yeah. it's it's a it's a great one to to practice what are these chat rooms because I've used tandem but only like one-on-one -on -one. we uh, someone found me and we started like chatting but the tandem I had problems with the tandem video uh, video calls so we always used Facebook or something else and we were just talking the two of us but I have, is it a new feature? Because I haven't, I didn't know that Tandem and HelloTalk have like the chat rooms. How, how do they work? Yeah, uh, you can search. Well, in Tandem, it's it's called par parties. Uh, you, in in, Hel in, in HelloTalk, it's called uh, chat rooms or, or something like that. And you go there and you pick the language you want to to hear or talk, for example, Japanese, and and you search the rooms. And there's different rooms with different topics, for example, uh, Japanese practice or just make friends and, and that stuff. And you enter and you, you can see the people, their flags, I mean, their countries, for example, uh, Japan, uh, America, Russia, I don't know. And you can see the language that they are learning, and you can ask yeah. you can ask them about that. For example, if I see that the people, uh, for example, Japanese people, but there's uh, English in their profile. Okay, I, I can speak English to you. Oh yeah, and and we can talk, and and it's fun because there's a lot of people there, 
Uh, so you can just enter and, and talk to them, practice the your language, and and it's really nice. So there are many people at the same time. Um, it, how, I, I don't understand how it works then. How, it, so if there are, for example, 10 people, uh, if, if everyone's four or five people speak at the same time, is it, isn't it uh, hard to hear anything or how, how does it work? Uh, because well, sometimes it happens, uh, but uh, I mean, in the in the most cases, it's just like like one people, then other people, then other yeah. people. So it's like 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 turns, like everyone uh, like respect you. So if but I mean, it's it's a, like a party. So there's a lot of people, the different uh, mentalities. Uh, so sometimes someone says something funny. And everyone starts laughing or or talking. So yeah, yeah. That, that kind of, of stuff can, uh, could happen. Yeah, and so so basically, I could also go there and just listen when other people talk. Oh yeah, you can just listen. It's really good, really good to to hear how how the natives speaks. Yeah, and is this a paid feature or? Can I also with the free account like participate in, in this? Yeah, it's it's the it's it's in the free account, uh, both Hello Talk and and Tandem. So yeah, it's it's a really good one. Oh, okay. Uh, that sounds interesting. I have to I have to try that. And my wife has wanted to continue improving her Polish. So I, I have to tell her she can just go there and listen. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, funny. Yeah. What about um, Duolingo and Buzo? Do you have any frustrations with apps like this, which like expand your vocabulary? Well, with, with Buzo, uh... I don't, but with with Duolingo, just yes, because Duolingo sometimes or a lot of times they teach you like like phrases uh, with with no sense or yeah. for example uh, when I was for example learning Russian in Duolingo sometimes I put uh, I had the Duolingo uh, Russian to to Spanish so I put a phrase in Spanish that makes sense. And in Duolingo marks marks that like like wrong, and I'm like, bro, I I am a Spanish native speaker, bro. How how you can correct me? I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's my first language, and <laughs> uh, yeah, and it that happens. And another thing, it's so a lot of times Duolingo teaches like, for example, um, the kid helps the squid, and it's like. Okay, I don't think I'm gonna use that. Uh, I, for example, you could teach me like, like I don't know. For example, uh, the the colors or or uh, I don't know so, something uh, more helpful. But you are teaching me like like the the elephant eats pizza, uh, and, and, and it's 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 weird. I mean, yeah. I do you, you don't really need that in the daily in the daily basis. Yeah, I I agree. I think, yeah, Duolingo is crazy, but yeah, I don't know. Actually, I haven't used Duolingo that much uh, in a few years, but before I used it a lot, and I, I also started um, a YouTube channel, Duolingo in real life. So I've I have almost fifty episodes of the craziest phrases. And I have edited <laughs> the background or something and show how, how where you would use the crazy uh, phrases. So. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, uh, I think Duolingo for me is it's it's okay if I'm on a beginner level, like currently in Japanese, Korean. But after I reached in other languages higher levels, uh, it's not that good. What about Buzu? I have only tried a bit, but I 
uh, no, I, I didn't like it that much, but uh, how how is your experience about Buzu? Yeah, I like Buzu because you can uh, meet people there uh, from the from your language goal. So it's like a community. So so it's a a great feature, and also uh, I like Busu because uh, you can you can go through through a lot of a lot of uh, like uh, chapters uh, with grammar, uh, vocabulary, and for example, I am now using it with my Japanese, and it really helps because for example, something that I learned in in Busu, like vocabulary. Like for example, the I don't know how to say the weeks and uh, months and and years in Japanese. Uh, then, in my school, in my online school, uh, I learning that and I like uh, reinforce like oh okay that's what what I I've seen in Busu, and and it it happens that for example if I am I am watching a movie or or YouTube in Japanese. And then I I see what I learn in in Busu. Yeah. I see that uh, there, and it's like oh, that's Busu helps. Yeah. Okay. I I just tried quickly the Busu's. Uh, I don't know. I, I guess it has many features, but the, just the feature which is a bit like Duolingo. It shows some vocabulary, and it was. But yeah, I, I haven't tried that much. Uh, my own vocabulary uh, application for vocabulary. Uh, so my favorite currently is uh, close master, but it could actually have a better organizing of the different topics. And also it has sometimes quite crazy phrases. Have you used, have you ever tried close master? Uh, I haven't tried It's an app. Yeah, 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 it's a uh, it's online and it's also available for mobile. Uh, it, it's a bit like other vocabulary apps like Dueling or Babel, Buzu. It it has phrases, but I I think the so you can choose multi option or fill in the blanks, or you record the uh, answer. But the feature I really like is that after answering, there's a button with the explanation, and it shows every word of the phrase. And it, especially in you know Japanese or Korean, when you have a lot of stuff going on with the grammar, you don't know what's going on. So it shows uh, like the endings or why there's a particle, why it's like ga or uh, to or something and every single word uh so but not every not every language has uh the explanations and in some languages not every phrase has the explanation but anyways i think it's it, it's really good because uh i think in duolingo and in one, many other applications you don't they don't teach the grammar about the phrases that well or sometimes you get a huge list, uh, like in Duolingo, especially in the desktop version, it was mainly like a Wikipedia article uh, about the grammar and it was boring. I read it, but I was like, ah, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's a bit boring. So I, I think cl what Closed Master did is much more interesting. And for, for me, it's, it, it's much better than other applications. But I also it's like, uh, like applications like Tandem that you use, but it's a bit, I think it's a different category. It's totally different because talking with people is definitely probably the best, but for vocabulary, my own uh, favorite is currently Close Master. Yeah, so you wanted to ask something. Yeah, uh, it's it's called Close Master, right? I can I can write the, na the name actually after after. Yeah, please. Because I, I would like to search it. Sure, I'll I'll write it to your Instagram later. Oh, um, thanks. One thing I was thinking: uh, if you're studying now in the university, don't you have any like exchange programs to Europe or Japan? Because you know, in my school now, uh, where I study computer science, 
uh, we have so many places where we could go. Actually, Monterrey, Monterrey is one one place where we can go. Most of, most of the places are in Europe, but they are also in Japan, South Korea, uh, Australia, Brazil, Argentina, uh, and in Mexico, Monterrey. Uh, so I was thinking, have you ever, did you ever consider any exchange program or is it difficult in, in Mexico to go abroad for, a, for an exchange semester? Well, um, it's, it depends, but in general terms, it's not difficult. Actually, there's a uh, studying programs uh, abroad, for example, to study well in my I, I'm gonna talk about my university my university the past year uh, there was uh, programs to study for example in in another states of the country uh, of for example another state from Mexico or even for example countries like United States or Brazil Argentina or, or others uh, Latin American countries and also, I remember I've seen uh, I've seen applications for a study study uh, masters in in Japan, uh, in China. Uh, I I talk I taught and Germany. Yeah. Uh, and I also I applied for a for a one uh, who who was in in Canada. I mean it it was like an English program. So if you if you could get like the the score, like because they have to to select you. If if I I haven't been selected, mm. but if if I have it, I could go to Canada for for one month to yeah. to be in there to like enjoy the experience, uh, immerse yourself in the culture because it it was Quebec actually. Uh, what that's why the reason because I started to learn French because I was like oh maybe if yeah. I go there I could speak French yeah. so yeah. at the end uh, I didn't went to Canada because I I wasn't selected but now I'm learning French so oh, some, okay. something good something good uh, happens from that and and you're still you're you're currently studying French yeah yeah and it's a, it's a hard one actually. Well, for me, it's, it's hard. Yeah. Is it because the orthography? Because, I mean, it has no sense how it's written or... I mean, I think it's... Engl English, well, English and French both have uh, a bit difficult orthographies compared to, like, for example, Spanish or Finnish as well. Well, uh, well for me, French, it's, it's hard yeah in in the in the writing it's hard because for example it's not like in spanish that just you you read it as as it as it is uh, write it for yeah. example hola hola in french it's it's very different the pronunciation and, and the and the reading so yeah i think the most difficult one in french is the pronunciation because even it's a a latin uh, language like Italian, Portuguese, yeah. but it's so so different. I mean, I remember uh, I was struggling uh, at first with French because at the time it, it was like like one year ago. Uh, about that, when I was started to 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 learn French, and I remember that I was like, I can understand more Russian, but <laughs> French I can I can understand anything. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. mean. I was like, like what, what he said. I mean, he, yeah. is that a really a Latin language? <laughs> because it's the pronunciation. It's it's really different from Spanish or Italian or or anything else. Yeah, I I agree. French definitely is the hardest from the from the four Romance languages that I I, I speak. It's the pronunciation, the writing. It's it's quite hard. Do you, do you can speak French? Yeah, yeah, I have, I have uh, two, yeah, two episodes in in French, the podcast. But I, I have to say, I, I struggle, I struggle with, with the conversations. I, uh, I definitely have to ask a few times in, uh, in one. If 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 I speak one hour, I, 
I would say I have to ask four or five times, like, uh, how do you say this? So <laughs> it's not perfect yet, but but I, I used French a lot this winter with the tourists and I improved it a lot. So I was talking about the Northern Lights in French, about the Finnish winter and everything. And it was a challenge, but I it, it's better now, but French, French is, is still yeah, quite that's hard. Nice. Yeah. But yeah, you can you can listen how I struggle. I have the episodes on YouTube. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, it's good entertainment also. Maybe if some people want to see how I struggle, then just pick the epi first episodes in my weakest languages. Uh, are there other languages that you haven't mentioned that you're studying or that you want to study maybe? Okay, uh, well... <clears throat> Uh, for now, um, that's just uh, well, that that those languages. But now I I started learning uh, Mandarin Chinese. Okay, so, you you like challenges. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But but I I've just been studying like for three weeks, so I I'm I'm at the very basics, like like yeah. Ni Hao, Xie Xie, the very basics. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, after almost nine years, I feel like I haven't advanced much from the basics. But actually, I have. But uh, it's 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 really difficult. Uh, and actually, if you're interested in it to learn Chinese, one of my friends was in Taiwan. Actually, two of my friends were in Taiwan. Taiwan has a lot of scholarships for people who want to learn Chinese for half a year or one year and so they they pay i don't know how much they pay but uh it, it's quite popular if you if you really get into chinese and want to go to china before japan and europe and <laughs> everything so that's also yeah yeah that's good thanks yeah what about uh finnish when are you going to learn <laughs> finnish well, uh, next, next lifetime. <laughs> well, uh, I, I don't know. Maybe now I have to consider Finnish uh, uh, because the, the things that you said to me about uh, Finland. But I've I've just like when when you uh, the first time you contacted me uh, in in Instagram, I, I've searched your profile and I've seen that you that you were a Finnish. So I like started to learn a little bit from of the language. Oh really? Uh, and I think it's yeah, but but just like like teeny things. No, like no, no. Now we or... we have a we will have a small section where uh, first you can tell what do you know about the Finnish language before telling the words that you know. So oh, what, okay, okay. So what do you know about Finland as a country or the Finnish language? Okay, well I know that Finland is the happiest country on the planet. Yeah, the. Um... Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's not true, but uh, so yes, yes, we have the title, but the people are not the happiest. It's, it's, it's about statistics, like the living conditions and education, oh, okay. and everything. But yeah, we are the country is happy, but the people are not the happiest. I, I would say. Uh, yeah, well, uh, I know that Finland. Uh, the I've seen a video uh, from Luisito Comunica. It's a a video creator here in Mexico, and, and he went there to to the north, to the north of Finland, and and I like it because uh, I I've seen the like the no, the lights northern in the lights, sky, northern lights. Yeah, the northern lights. Uh, I mean, it, it was a video, but it was really beautiful, and and also I like it, the fact that, for example, that there was like like a, a lot of snow, and like it it was like a how to say like a, like a like a fire tale. It, it oh, was really yeah, it's like a winter wonderland dream. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah, it was like, bro, that that's that's like my Christmas dream. 
Like my my kids uh, dream, yeah. dream, bro. <laughs> yeah, it, it is really beautiful in, in winter here. That's why I actually moved from southern Finland, where I've lived almost all my life. Because in southern Finland, the winters are not as beautiful. Uh, there is there isn't that much snow, so sometimes it's just black because uh, like the streets and everything are not covered on. on with snow just slush it's melting and it's not nice so here we it's really beautiful yeah and, and also uh, i watched that in finland uh yeah uh, as you said that the the northern lights i've seen that in finland especially in, in the north uh there for example in the day here in mexico it's the sun well i i've seen that the sun uh, sometimes uh, like I, i'm not sure but like for example a couple of months you you haven't sound you have you have you have not sunlight like it's completely dark during the day yeah yeah, yeah. In, in winter yeah and now let me check uh here for example, now we have a lot of uh, sunlight. We we almost don't have any darkness now from uh, May. So I would say May, June, July, August. I would say it's really bright during this time. I will check what time is the sunset and sunrise. Uh, it doesn't show. So it might be that we don't Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, of course, now it's actually Johannus. Johannus means uh, midsummer festival. So now it's actually the longest day of the year, or I think it's tomorrow. So we don't have sunset or sunrise because the sun stays above the horizon. And in, in my city, it's not that much as it's really bright. Yeah, two, three months. But uh, the maximum in the northernmost areas of Finland uh, is, I think, 73 days without sun sunset. So the sun doesn't go below the horizon for two and a half months. Here, it's not that much, but it's still, I think, one and a half or two months. I'm not sure. So yeah, yeah in, in the night it's 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 not super bright, but it's uh like dusk, you know. It's not dark. <laughs> it's uh, it's quite fun. Yeah, it's it's really different from from here. I mean, and and I would like to ask you because you you live in Finland. I mean, you're Finnish, uh, Finland, because Finland it's in the north of Europe. Do you have like like a lot of of nordic influence uh from uh sweden and norway you mean or yeah and denmark and and yeah nordic countries in general uh, finland is a nordic country so so nordic countries are finland sweden norway denmark iceland and faroe islands and greenland are part of denmark so we are the nordic countries uh Scandinavia is mostly like Sweden and Norway. Some, not all Finns know that Finland is not part of Scandinavia because the oh yeah yeah because I've heard that 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 Scandinavia uh, it doesn't include uh, Finland. Yeah, because the Scandic mountains go in the north. There are a bit of the Scandic Scandic uh, mountains in the Finnish side, just a bit, like close to the border of Sweden and Norway. So Finland is not a Scandinavian country, but uh, it's a Nordic country, um, and oh, okay. we 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 have a lot of we have a lot in common um, because we were part of Sweden five six hundred no more than six hundred years. So Swedish is still our second official language. And yeah, we we have really a lot in common with Sweden, Norway, Denmark, uh, in the culture. Like for example, in Sweden and Norway, they also have now the Midsummer Festival, which is one of the most important festivals during the year because now 
now it's bright all the time. So usually people go to their summer cottages with their families and they are at the cot yeah, at the cottage, they go swimming in the lake, they go to the sauna. Finns are like more the sauna as Sweden Swedes or Norwegians. But uh, yeah, we have a lot in common. And uh, what about the Finnish language? Uh, is there much that you know about it? Okay. Well, as I said, uh, I've just searched like, like phrases, like for example, uh, little phrases like uh, "terve," "moi," yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, hey. yeah. yeah, and yeah, yeah. and 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 some so some others. But what uh, like catch my attention it 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 attention it was for example the the countries the the people for example from just to, to say Argentinian Argentina is like Argentina line and I, yeah. I heard all the Latin American countries and and it was ended with line and like cool Nation line and, uh, and no it all, like, all 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 nationalities and in line and yeah. yeah I mean it was like interesting yeah, and usually uh, the country, country names and the languages are the same, but the countries are written with the capital letter. So uh, Finland is, for example, Suomi with the uh, capital letter, but also the Finnish language is also Suomi. Or you can also, you can say Suomen kieli, the Finnish language. But, uh, or Germany is uh, Saksa, the country and also the language is Saxa or Saxon Kieli. You can say also that one. Uh, I would like to ask you, uh, for example, if in the future um, I would like to go to to Finland, for example, uh, I can survive just with English, or I have to know uh, the Finnish language. Uh, no, you, English. We Finland has uh, second or third best. Uh, English proficiency in the whole European Union. I think Luxembourg is number one. Uh, Finland is second. It's always in, in top five, you know, uh, Luxembourg, uh, Finland, Sweden, Norway, Denmark, these countries, and Netherlands also. So even 50, 60 year old people speak English. But well, uh, for example, for you as a, as a Finnish person, uh, do you consider that even uh, if, even if you if you I mean as you said F Finnish people are really good with English do you think that Finnish it's really important to like to like getting into the culture and and enjoy the the country as 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 a one hundred percent or just with English it's possible. No, it's one hundred percent no. You can you can enjoy you can enjoy the country but maybe. 80 percent or 90 i don't know uh but yeah i, I don't i don't think you can enjoy any country 100 percent if you don't know the language that the majority of people are speaking of course we have here some municipalities where only swedish is spoken and i don't know if you have if you know our autonomous region of Åland. Uh, it's an archipelago, and it's an autonomous part of Finland, and they only speak Swedish. So Finnish isn't even mandatory, so they don't need, need to know even Finnish. I actually, I actually didn't know this uh, before I went there with my wife two years ago. We cycled around the archipelago. I think it was like 390 Three hundred seventy kilometers, like the, like uh, a small trip there. Um, so, I was really surprised that almost no one, even the, at the cafes or accommodations, no one spoke Finnish. They are Finnish citizens. They are part of Finland, but they they speak Swedish. So, so it, it, it's definitely if you if you if you live in Holland. You can enjoy it hundred percent if you speak Swedish. So I think actually, as a Finn, I cannot uh, enjoy being in Holland if I lived there. 
if I didn't speak Swedish. I, I of course speak because uh, I have studied it and I practice it. But uh, if if I would live there without knowing it, I couldn't enjoy it. So I would say, yeah, if you don't speak Swedish or Finnish in Finland, then I, I don't think you can enjoy it a hundred percent. But you can enjoy it still with English. And here in the north, here in the north, we actually have some Sami, Sami languages, the indigenous languages. And I've studied northern Sami, which is the biggest one. It has, I think, around 40,000 speakers, so not that much. Um, and there are also Inari Sami, it's called Sami, which are spoken in Finland and in Russia, Sweden, Norway. They have other Sami languages as well. In total, there are like nine still alive. And actually, the, I wanted to ask about you, about Mexico, because I know you have so many, I mean, tens. I, I don't know if you probably have hundreds of languages, the indigenous, like Mayan and uh, other, like you have many no language families also, not only Mayan languages, also some other indigenous. How are the indigenous languages in Mexico currently uh, present in, for example, your state? Are they taught anywhere? And do you have many friends who speak any indigenous languages with their families? Okay, this is a really, a really good topic. Uh, here in Mexico, uh, it it depends because there there's uh, certain uh, parts of Mexico where where the the language, for example, Mayan or Nahuatl, uh, it's very vivid. Very, I mean, the, there's even places where there's no Spanish, just that language. Oh, but there's okay. like like yeah. hidden communities like yeah. very specific points on the map yeah but for example here in my state uh well i i'm gonna there's a lot of immigrants now here it's a it's a good point but for later yeah. but uh yeah. to talking about uh, indigenous uh, languages like native languages uh you can really hear it i mean i in the elementary school uh i remember I had a, a classmate who he said that his father uh, could speak uh, English, uh, Spanish as well, and Nahuatl. Nahuatl, yeah. it's it's a, the Aztec language. It, actually, I, I've studied a little bit Nahuatl uh, in the past, and it's very interesting because Nahuatl, uh, it's it's like the the Spanish name or, or not the Spanish, but they, they refer to their language. Well, it depends because now what it has like like a variance depends from the sounds. It the, the, the sound it's it's different. It's not yeah. the same the, the now what from from its sound, for example, uh Mex Mexico state, uh, it's it's not very similar to I don't know, maybe now what from from another sounds uh, another state from, from the south. But now what they remember they refer to the language as Mexicano Tlachtoli. Mm. Mexicano Tlachtoli. So it means yeah. the language yeah. of Mexico. Yeah. Actually, the, the people who speak the language uh, now what they were the the Mexicas. So that's their, their language. And and now what in the past uh, was very important. It was like it was like Spanish now here, because a lot of people uh, even uh, a, a lot of people they have like they they are, they had like their own culture their own language but they learned uh, Nahuatl because yeah. it was the the language from from the from the yeah the the emperor the the Aztec yeah. king yeah. so everyone in the empire has to speak uh, to spoke Nahuatl so yeah. so yeah now uh, the most important ones I think it's Nahuatl and Mayan because Mayan it's in the south. Yeah. That there's different uh, kinds of 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 Mayan. For example, there's Mayan from Quintana Roo. I think it's different from the Mayan uh, from Yucatan, and even in in Belize and Guatemala. I think it's another kinds of Mayan. 
So yeah, yeah uh, it's like not, now it's it's uh, the the thing with Mexico it's that the the native languages are not uh, seen like like for example in in a Spanish they they're they're not seen they're not seen as languages they are seen like dialects like they are not they're not worked at like yeah. like oh it's a native language it, it's it's inferior you know like Spanish is better like you have yeah. to speak Spanish here so a lot of people in the past they suffered from from like discrimination like oh that's from from indigenous people you have to speak Spanish so the grandfathers they didn't teach the language to their sons yeah. and their grandsons so that's the reason why now it it has lost Mexico a lot of of indigenous uh, languages but there are uh, still people who speak the languages uh, as I said in communities where you can go and if you speak for example Mayan or Nahuatl it's like Spanish you can you can go uh, every Everywhere and they talk to you in that language if you know the language, but yeah. uh, in Mexico there's a still like like the this like colonial mind mindset yeah. like no like but for me it's funny because we Mexicans we are not even Europeans, but uh, sometimes we criticize another Mexicans calling them like indigenous people where when we even we we are not European we are Mexicans I mean we're we are not. Uh, indigenous people but we we're not uh spanish Sp spaniards as well yeah so yeah, yeah that's that's kind of of the the thing yeah yeah uh do you have many so did you you had one friend who spoke an indigenous language or did did you have any uh in, in the beginning you you mentioned some someone like that oh yeah well, yeah, in the elementary school, uh, I have a classmate who, in one occasion, he said that his father, uh, he could speak uh, Nahuatl, uh, Spanish, and even English. Uh, it's so, just the father, just the father, not uh, yeah. himself. So I think it's because because his father, uh, I, I don't remember well, but I think his father, he, he, he is from the South. Uh, from the south of Mexico, because in the south of Mexico is where you can find more of indigenous languages, the south and the in the middle of the country. Yeah. So, yeah, actually, yeah. I, 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 I got here uh, a map, and uh, also it says that two hundred and ninety-one languages are spoken in Mexico, and from these hundred and fifty-eight in Oaxaca. Which, uh, Oaxaca in, in the south. So, I mean, yeah, that, yeah. That, it, Oaxaca is a, it, like has border with Guate, Guatemala, right? Yeah, or, actually. Or, or was it uh, after Oaxaca, then Chiapas, and then Guatemala? Or did. Uh, anyways, in the south. And also, it shows here that, yeah, the majority are in the south. There are some small pockets in in the north as well and the center, but most of these seem to be uh, close to Yucatan or Chiapas, Oaxaca, and uh, Guatemala. Yeah, uh, it's really interesting. Actually, my grandfather is from Oaxaca, so he he couldn't speak uh, Nahuatl or another indigenous uh, language, but yeah, he's from from Oaxaca. Oh, you say it? Okay. Wa Oaxaca. 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 Yeah. Oaxaca. Okay. Yeah. So he didn't speak any indigenous language. Yeah. I mean, uh, I'm not completely sure because I I haven't uh, asked it, uh, asked, but asked him. But yeah, I, uh, I think he, he could only speak as Spanish. But it's interesting because I remember in one occasion that he he found it like like uh an old uh, disco with with music like an old disco and he put it and i remember it, it was like a french song and he was singing a part of that and i was like whoa 
Yeah. I mean, that's cool. I mean, my my grandfather uh, is cool <laughs> singing French. I mean, yeah. it, it's not it's not it's not common. Yeah. And yeah, it was really nice. Yeah. Uh, we we actually had the same situation in Finland and other Nordic countries, uh, in the nor northern part of Finland, Sweden, Norway, where where the Sami people live. Uh, they were also discriminated, and many of the Sami people lost their language. So that that's why there are not that many speakers. There never w w was that many because these are like there are not that many people living here in the north. But uh, the situation in Finland, at least, has it, it has got got better, uh, and there are there are like kindergartens and some institutions where they teach uh, the indigenous or the Sami languages yeah actually here here as well uh, the government uh, is trying to to like impulse uh, the the language learning from from indigenous uh, languages I, I mean they are trying to to like to like not not to discriminate because I've I've listened, uh, I've seen videos on YouTube where there are some uh, schools in in South Mexico where they teach. Uh, I I know there's there's for example, uh, parts of Mexico where where the you can speak the indigenous language without problems, but in, in those schools I've seen that they were singing the the national hymn. Uh, Instead of Spanish, they were singing in in, in their yeah. indigenous language. So oh, wow. I think yeah. it's really nice. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. What else could I ask? I think I've asked almost everything I wanted to ask. Is there still something that comes into your mind about your language okay. learning or Mexico, Finland, any? Yeah, I, I would like to say that uh I I forget to say that one of the reasons uh, because I started to learn Russian it's because since the war in Ukraine uh, a lot of uh, Russians and and Ukrainian people came from uh, to Mexico oh so to Mexico people, also yeah yeah um he, even here in Matamoros I mean it's a border city but it's not like a touristic place you know it's it's like a common city and yeah. here now we have uh, Ukrainians, so I I thought like, well, it, it's it's good to learn Russian because I can speak to them, but now I am like maybe thinking about it because maybe uh, they they don't want to speak Russian, but for the situation maybe they just want to speak U Ukrainian. I don't know, but maybe I think that have have you heard, yeah have you heard about this? Because I was going to ask you uh, about this that. Are are they? Uh, is uh, do you know if they speak Ukrainian or Russian? Because they it can be fifty fifty. I mean, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, I'm not sure, but uh, I, I'm not sure because I I didn't ask ask, ask them. But uh, may, maybe in the future, if if I see a a Russian, because I've seen, um. I've seen Ukrainians here and in Brownsville. Brownsville is the city in New York, in New York, in Texas. It's it's the city in the border to to Matamoros. Yeah. So so may, maybe I, I could try to speak Russian and and see what's happened because because maybe I I have like like this idea of of oh they don't want to speak Russian, but maybe they they do. So so yeah, that's interesting. I would like to know it because my my wife who herself is Ukrainian but Russian speaking uh, she uh, was a teacher here at the refugee center uh, and she was teaching Finnish to the Ukrainians and uh, she was teaching in Russian because it's her mother tongue and every Ukrainian understands Russian she also speaks Ukrainian of course uh, and she said uh, she said there's a interesting phenomenon that some of the Ukrainians who are Russian speakers, they said they no, they, their mother tongue in when they had to 
uh, practice Finnish. So in Finnish, they had to say, my I am my name is this and this. Uh, I am from Ukraine. I speak my mother tongue is this language. And many of them said Ukrainian, even though they are not Ukrainian speakers. They are Russian, like their mother tongue is Russian. And my wife could say, like, listen in the background. They were speaking Russian with their kids. And then they are they, they are saying, oh, <laughs> I, I speak Ukrainian. This is because of the, I mean, the Russian speakers are discriminated in Ukraine. And not all Ukrainians will admit this because some of them are so patriotic and uh, like there's so much propaganda against the Russian speakers. So this is why it's crazy. There are actually some many, like my wife told that there are many of her ex colleagues and friends who on social media only write Ukrainian, but they probably speak Russian with their families because of the situation now. And I mean, it's crazy. Why? I don't think the language is is to blame. So, and also pretending not to speak your mother tongue. I I really don't understand that. Yeah, it's yeah, it's hard because, for example, I can understand uh, that situation. For example, in people who are uh, like for uh, like one hundred percent Ukrainian. But for example, if you have your 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 parents, if they're Russians, I mean, why why you why you don't want to let, to speak the language? You know, yeah, uh, I mean, they they have their own reason, their own I, reason. I don't think they are like hundred percent Ukraine. I, I mean, because you in Ukraine, everyone has you know DNA from Poland, Belarus, Russia. Oh yeah, yeah, that's loving. Like, for country. example, my wife, uh, sh her. Well, great grandfather is from Poland. Some ancestors, some grandparents are like hundred percent Ukrainian speakers. One grandparent from Russia. So I mean, and I'm I'm sure that almost every Ukrainian has some ancestors in either Russia, Poland, or the Balkan or Baltic countries. So. I, <laughs> it's 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 a crazy situation and yeah <laughs> uh, it's really sad that uh, someone is angry that someone speaks a specific language so i hope i just hope this war would end and yeah yeah it's a uh, it's it's really hard uh, and well here also well we have ukrainians and russians we have uh, Haitians too. I think it's it's in English. Haitians uh, from ha Haiti. 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 Yeah. Haitians. Yeah. Yeah. From Haiti. Yeah. 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 We have we have a uh, and and now we have uh, from from there and we have a lot of of Latin Americans. For example, uh, Venezuela. Yeah, yeah. 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 A lot and and I I've heard. That even, for example, in the south of Mexico, there's even Arabs, like people from from I don't know, maybe, uh, so some uh, Arabian countries. So, so yeah, yeah Mexico, it's it's now uh, uh, getting a lot of immigrants. It, we we are like uh, converting us like very international, yeah. it, it, and it's it's and it's uh, quite quite of rare because. It's rare but interesting at the same time because uh, the the last year I was uh, at the at the taxi station I was like uh, waiting for a taxi and I remember uh, seeing seeing people speaking another language and I was like what's that it's it's uh, French or Portuguese yeah. it sounds a little bit like Spanish but it's yeah. not Spanish yeah and then I I started to learn about the culture and and I and and I searched and it was uh, ha Haitian. Oh okay, like so Haitian Creole. So yeah, yeah French, Haitian Creole. But, uh, yeah Haitian Creole, French-based language, Creole language. 
Yeah, and and, it, and it's interesting because uh, I've uh, like I've listened to some phrases in in Haitian Creole, and it was like French, like they have bonjour, uh, merci, and and that kind of of stuff. So it's 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 uh, clo closely to French. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think uh, I have to start uh, ending the podcast, but uh, thanks. Thanks a lot, Arturo, for the interesting episode. We definitely have to make in the future a new one. If you if you move like to Japan or to somewhere else, we have to like uh, then make a new episode. Maybe the next time in in Spanish or if we we both speak well enough Japanese, then in Japanese. Oh, let's see. Let's see. Yeah, that would be nice. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so thank you Arturo and thank you everyone for listening to us and see you in the next episode bye see you thank you